Hello class. In this series, we'll be building this slick messaging application that you see right here, which is not a copy of Facebook Messenger. I don't know why anyone would think that. This Messenger clone, I mean, this unique chat app, allows the user to see other users on the platform, read messages they received from them, and reply to them with ones of their own, just like so. Now, of course, a chat application would not be complete without real-time data transmission. So the user will be able to send and receive messages and have the user interface update without having to refresh the page or click a button or do anything really. On top of that, they can also react to these messages with a couple of emojis, just like in Messenger. And yes, they can also react to their own messages, although I don't know why anyone would want to do that. Now, um, because we have to manage multiple user accounts, uh, the app will ship with a login and register pages. The latter needs to ensure that emails and usernames are unique across users and that passwords conform to some basic criteria, um, all of which will happen on the server. The server will also handle password encryption and uh, access token generation and all the bells and whistles of authentication, which we will get to at a later point in time. So if you're excited to build this app with me, then make sure to like this video right now so that the YouTube algorithm does its job and uh, gets other people excited too, I guess. By the way, if you're new to the channel, um, click the subscribe button uh, because I got so much new content on the way for you and uh, I wouldn't want to miss you. Uh, I wouldn't want you to miss it. <laughs> oh boy, it's so good to be back. All right, enough of my cringe intro and uh, let's get rolling with this, shall we? Alright, welcome to the unscripted part of the video where I explain to you what pieces of tech that we're going to be using to build this app during this series and uh, why I chose these, um, you know, uh, compared to any other tool that there is out there. So first thing for server side, we're going to be using Node.js as a server side runtime. Uh, now Node.js is really cool because it, it's really simplistic. You only use what you um, want to use. It's not a massive framework that has a lot of like tools that maybe if you're not going to use, they're going to confuse you. And uh, of course, Node.js is in JavaScript, which synergizes really well with sending JSON back and forth. And uh, it's really actually built to handle high input output uh, applications. So it's really good for apps that um, have clients that are always connected and sending data back and forth. So that's the main reason. And also it's a majorly adopted uh, tool. So the community is massive. So any problem that you come across, you can find any solution to it in uh, like less than a minute on, you know, in a Google search. So that's the reason. So uh, you can install the latest uh, stable version, uh, 12, or you can install the current one, 14. It doesn't make a difference. Um, to make sure that you have it uh, run in your command line, go and uh, run node-v. And uh, I do have indeed have version 12. And it comes with NPM, which is a package manager that you will use to install all the packages that we need. Now, uh, for the framework on the server side, we're going to be using Apollo server. So this is the Apollo website. So you have both Apollo server that we're going to be used on the server side and also the Apollo client, which we're going to use um, along with React uh, on our client side to consume our GraphQL um, API. So Apollo server is really cool in, in because it takes care of a bunch of like configuration stuff that happens in the background. And it also uh, gives us this really cool uh, playground. Uh, this is a little sneak peek into what we're going to build in a bit. So we have this little cool playground that we can experiment and run all the different uh, mutations and, uh, and queries that we have on, in our GraphQL um, you know, uh, schema. So we could use something like uh, Postman, but the support for GraphQL is not um, all the way there yet. So uh, we'll use this instead. Now for the database, this might come as a surprise to you, but we will use something called SQLize, which is uh, an ORM uh, for Node.js that handles SQL based um, databases. So relational databases, things like MySQL, Maria, MariaDB, Postgres, whatever you have, any, any relational database, SQL based, uh, this handles it. Now, I could have gone with MongoDB because that synergizes better with Node.js, but uh, I found out um, like based on experience in the real world uh, with big applications that has like um, a lot of relational like models that relate to each other, it's better to use SQL because it's more reliable, it's more performant, and also like you, you fast and you get to customize like what what exactly data that you want to get back and uh, it, it, it's better for bigger applications and in real world scenarios um, in most scenarios sql always trumps uh, you know 
uh, document based like MongoDB. So we'll go with that. Now for this, uh, you'll need to install the CLI, which will help like uh, scaffold a bunch of stuff, uh, which we'll get to later. So you can run npm install uh, dash g, of course, after you have already have a node and npm and do sequelize dash CLI like this. I'm not gonna run it because I already have it installed. So instead, uh, I'm gonna check that I have it. So npm list dash g, I'm gonna do depth zero so it doesn't show me all the sub dependencies. And there we go. So I do have a sequelize CLI. Uh, make sure that you have version six um, because sometimes for some reason you, you run install and it um, installs version five. Uh, we're gonna be using six, which is the latest one. Uh, which if you haven't used SQL, if you have used SQLize before, this is so much better because it makes it easier to use um, leverage ES6 um, modules, uh, ES6 classes. Um, we'll see more on this later. So for the SQL database, I chose to go with uh, MySQL, but you can use Postgres or, or anything else if you want. And uh, to interact with your database, you can install the MySQL workbench. I believe they have, yeah, it's supported as well on Mac OS and, uh, and Linux. So you can either, either install this, uh, which I believe comes with a CLI. And now I have this and I also have uh, ZAMP, um, which is now available on OS uh, 10 as well, Mac OS 10. Um, this is something I use when I have to do some PHP development. This is cool as well. Uh, it provides us with this uh, uh, tool called uh, PHP My Admin. Um, maybe some of you have heard of it before. It's pretty cool to interact with our database. Um, now for the front end, of course, we're gonna be using React. Now, uh, I chose React because uh, front-end frameworks are pretty much the same, except for Angular is a bit like too corporate-y and for like way like bigger applications. So I, I chose to not go with that. I could have gone with Vue, but uh, React is uh, more widely adopted. So the community is just bigger and there's, um, to be honest, I, I love the Vue and the way Vue templates run, but React has way more libraries so you can, you can find any any tool to solve any problem that you need to solve in React. Um, I'm gonna be using Bootstrap, like I said, to style the app, but um, uh, but we'll use this uh, React Bootstrap, which is a wrapper for Bootstrap um, in React, which makes it easier to uh, use certain elements. Um, we'll see more um, evidence of this later. So these are the tools. Uh, make sure that you have, well, I already ran through the prerequisites. So you have everything installed if you've done everything here. So yeah, of course uh, you need an editor. I'll be using uh, VS Code. I actually forgot to bring up that. <laughs> so uh, I'll be using VS Code. If you want, you can use Atom or whatever. I find that VS Code is really cool with the integrated terminal and all the packages that, you know, the plugins and extensions that you can get uh, to work alongside with it. So yeah, these are the, the tools that we're gonna be using. So in the next video, we're gonna start to set up the server and uh, you know get going with that. So look forward to that again. Uh, please make sure to subscribe and like the video so that you know we grow and uh, we get more excited developers. <laughs> All right, so thank you for watching and uh, hope to see you in the next one. Bye.